Could you give me some practical examples of what would my love for my partner motivate me to do for my partner? Yes. So I suppose we can use similar examples that we used last time. So what were they? I can't. Yeah, that's you know, all right. In the previous question. Yeah. Well, so in the previous question, which was about what would love of myself motivate me to do. For myself. For myself. Now we're looking at what would love of my partner motivate me to do for my partner. Exactly. And the first one we discussed, and we did touch on this a little bit in the last answer, was about sex in a relationship. If one party doesn't want to sexually engage. Yes. So. Right. So, so let's say I was in the case of the woman I was the woman and who I didn't want who to. didn't want to sexually engage yep. and I and I still believe that I love my partner mm -hmm. well obviously I desperately want to fix this particular problem because I'd, I'd understand how much it's affecting my partner mm -hmm. I'd understand that my partner is feeling t probably rejected sexually rejected and even if my partner's not feeling that and my partner's completely happy, it's still an issue that I need to resolve for my love of my partner. Yeah. Why is it that I don't desire a sexual relationship with my partner? Yeah. Who I say I love, mm. who I say that I have affection for. Like, what's going on within me that would cause me to have such a thing? If, if I truly loved my partner, my love for my partner would desire that I address the emotion. Mm. My love for my partner wouldn't put it off. It wouldn't delay it. It wouldn't try to get away with it. It wouldn't minimise it. It wouldn't shift the blame onto someone else. It wouldn't blame my partner. It wouldn't justify it. Oh, I've been hurt when I was little. That's the reason why I feel this way or whatever. It would have a sincere desire to address and resolve the issue right now. And if you don't have a sincere desire to address and resolve the issue right now, you've got to question how much you love your partner because mm. you're certainly not loving the way God loves. God loves in this way, wanting to resolve issues right now. God loves... God loves by wanting to do things for others, right? So if you don't want to, there's got to be some reasons emotionally that you need to address. And, and if you're unwilling to address them, you've got to question whether you have any motivation at all to love. Mm. So, so that's what love of my partner would motivate me to do for my partner. If I was on the receiving end of this and I was the male in the, in the, in the equation and I was being, you know, I, 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 my wife had told me I don't want to have sex with you anymore. Yeah. My love for my partner would go, okay, I love you, but I do want you to address this issue emotionally. Because... Because I love you and, and, and I feel that, uh, that you're going to be desperately unhappy if you keep down this track. You know, you, you're, going to get, you're not going progressing towards God. You're not progressing towards love. Our relationship's going to be severely affected sooner or later by this issue. And in particular, your attitude, there's got to be something going on inside of you, which is self-destructive if you're going to deny your own sexuality. Mm -hmm. so, so I would be very concerned for you in that regard. And I, but I wouldn't browbeat you. I wouldn't push you. I wouldn't say to you, oh, you've got to have sex with me, otherwise I'm leaving. And I wouldn't ask you to betray yourself. But I would expect that you actually have a sincere desire to address the problem mm -hmm. rather than just trying to make the problem go away all the time and trying to avoid it all the time. And if you didn't have a sincere desire to address the problem, I would talk to you about your lack of self-love and your lack of love of myself, mm -hmm. which are two other questions yes. that we can ask. <laughs> So, so um, we, we can see that if we truly loved our partner in both cases, we'd be tolerant of the issue or problem, mm -hmm. but we would not allow the issue or problem to continuously exist. If I loved my partner uh, and I was the person no longer feeling like sex, I wouldn't want the issue to exist for the rest of our relationship, knowing that it would cause my partner so much distress. If I loved my partner and I was on the receiving end of, of the withdrawal, I wouldn't want the issue to continue to exist knowing that my own partner's love of herself is going to be affected by the issue and also that my own feelings are going to be affected by the issue and if I truly loved my partner, I would be honest with my partner about what my feelings are going to be about that. Yeah. So, so you can see in both cases, it, it, we definitely would not avoid the issue. Yeah. We would yeah. want to resolve it. We would want to love the way God loves or love in a pure way. Okay, so let's talk about another one we talked about last time. If I have a partner who doesn't want to clean up after themselves mm -hmm. around the house domestically, mm -hmm. let's say, 
what would my love of that partner motivate me to do in that situation? It may motivate you to do a lot of things that a lot of people today wouldn't believe is loving, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, um, if I truly love my partner, I would want or desire my partner to address the emotional issues within themselves as to why they don't have any self-responsibility. Mm -hmm. If I truly loved them, I wouldn't let them get away with it. That doesn't mean I would nag them. I would just state with them once what I feel the problem is, see whether they had a desire to address it. I would not clean up after them. Mm. However, if they were living in my environment, they would have one of two choices. If you're going to live in my environment and be a mess, then, and you're going to choose to remain a mess and not address the issue, then you can no longer live in my environment. You've got to leave until you address the issue. And is that decision a reflection of your love of yourself or your love of them? My love of them. It's a reflection of my love of them because I don't want them to stay in a state where they don't love themselves and care enough about themselves and refuse to clean up after themselves as a result of their lack of care for themselves. Mm -hmm. Just my love of them, let alone my love of myself, would motivate me to do that. Secondly, if they said they wanted to address the issue, but they never did, I would say, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> and I would tell them that they're a liar because that is the, the truth. truth. <laughs> and it's loving to tell the truth. And it's loving to tell them the truth. If I loved my partner, I would always tell them the truth, including the truth that they're a liar. <laughs> I would also um, take other actions as well. If they placed their gear in my space and refused to move it, I would probably, if it was me, I'd take it down to the op shop and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> or I'd take it, or, 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 I'd, or, or I'd pack it all up in a box and, and I would never clean it. And I'd just put it, you know, so that I can maintain my own space. But if that problem became excessive, then I'd ask them to leave, in fact, on that one issue. Mm -hmm. I would ask my partner to leave just because they're not tidying up after themselves on that one issue. Yep. Because there are so many issues involved with it, actually. There's issues of self-love from their perspective. There's issues of their love for myself. Yeah. There's issues of my love for them if I continue to allow it without addressing it. There's issues of cleaning up after themselves, which is an issue of my love for myself. Yep. I shouldn't have to clean up after somebody else. They should be doing their own cleaning up after themselves. If they love themselves, they'd do that. And if they love me, they'd do that. So there's quite a lot of issues involved yeah. with that particular one example. There is. Where, where I, it, it, it's such a big issue that it could even precipitate uh, me saying to my partner, look, we can't live together until you address this issue. I still love you. I'm not going to run off with someone else or anything, but we're just not living together until you address this issue mm. because it's a big issue. You don't love yourself, and if you don't love yourself, no matter how much love I give you, you're not going to feel it. No matter how much love I give you, you're going to always still not love yourself. No matter how much love I give you, you're still going to feel bad about yourself. So it's a problem. We've got to resolve it. Mm. So I don't see it as a little problem. A lot of people in a relationship would see that as a little problem not worth breaking up over. <laughs> I see that as a pretty large problem of a lack of self-love and a lack of love for your partner if you don't clean up after yourself. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Okay, let's talk about something a little bit less Western. Mm -hmm. What if we're in Africa mm -hmm. and um, the typical division, there's a strong division of gender roles in yes. Africa yep. within a relationship. So if I'm the woman, my job is to collect the water for the family. Yeah, and if I was, if I was your husband, if I truly loved you, I wouldn't allow that to continue day after day after day after day, particularly if I wasn't working. So there's a lot of men that you know, sit around watching their women in Africa bringing back the water from wells five, ten kilometres away, mm -hmm. you know, carrying it on their heads and so forth, because they say it's a woman's job. So the issue is for those males, they don't want to address the emotion within themselves of what is a woman's job and what is a man's job. Mm -hmm. They don't want to address the emotion within themselves of trying to get approval from their mates, from their brothers, you know, from the men in, mm -hmm. the, in their tribe or whatever. And they're not wanting to address the issue of whether they really love their partner. If you truly loved your partner, you would not expect your partner to get your own water for you. If you truly love her, you wouldn't do that because you, that, if you truly loved her, you would take self-responsibility and if you truly loved her, you wouldn't expect her to take responsibility for you. Mm. So it's a huge issue for most men there that they need to stop this big facade about what the man does, you know, 
and start looking at what love does. Because mm. because it's going to... What, what happens in these kind of environments eventually is the women have so much rage and anger eventually that they put on weight as a result of the way, rage and anger that they feel, that they're holding on to. They often, uh, they often then heavy people around and push people around as a result of the rage and anger they're holding on to. And, and the men are not realising that they're creating a lot of the rage and anger by putting the women in, an, in a position where the woman can't, can't get out of it. And they're demanding the woman looks after their needs. This is not a manly thing to do. <laughs> a man looks after his own needs. Yeah. He doesn't demand that the woman looks after his needs for him. A man takes responsibility for his own life. By the way, a woman does too. Yeah. A, a true man who loves himself and loves his wife would not watch his wife carry home day after day after day after day after day water on her head while at the same time sitting around with his friends watching it happen. Mm -hmm. He would not allow himself to engage such activity or behaviour. <clears throat> Okay, so let's stay in Africa. In some places in Africa, if I'm a woman, it's my job to build the house, actually, that mm -hmm. we live in. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're saying you're my husband and your love of me would motivate you to help me build the house, but I'm saying to you, I don't want you to because I'm going to look silly in front of my, my sisters, my yeah. fellow women, mm -hmm. that you are now coming and messing with what, is actually bringing me pride and bringing me a sense of achievement. Yeah. So what would your love of me do in that situation? I couldn't agree with you. I would say to you, look, obviously you're worried about people's, other people's opinion of you more than you're worried about love of yourself and more than you're worried about my love for you. Mm -hmm. I love you and so I can't allow you to do this unless I'm already engaged somewhere else working for our family. I can't allow you to do this. If I'm engaged every day working somewhere else, well, then I, I can allow that to occur. But if I'm just watching you build the house that I'm eventually going to live in and I take no responsibility for that process because you see it as a point of personal pride, then you've got an issue with personal pride mm. <laughs> <laughs> that you need to address. And my love of you would not allow you to get away with that without me saying the truth about it. Mm -hmm. And my love of you wouldn't allow me to agree with you on the issue even if it meant that your sisters didn't like you anymore or even if it meant that all of your you know, sisters were all jealous because you've now got a man who you know, wants to do things to help you yeah. like, and you're worried about their jealousy and what their jealousy might cause. You wouldn't be worried if you truly understood love. Mm. Yep. All right, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. um, so what about, say is very hypothetical <laughs> say I'm a partner who yeah. um, wants you my partner to fix the computer yeah. because um, I don't either I don't want to do it or I don't know enough about it to do it for myself yes so what would your love of me motivate you to do in that situation well if there wasn't a demand and if if there was a willingness for you to understand and take responsibility for your own computer, mm -hmm. and you had demonstrated that willingness in the past, mm -hmm. then I might give you the gift of doing it. However, if there was a demand and there was a definite feeling coming from you that you didn't want to take any responsibility, you didn't want to know anything about it, yeah. in fact, and you only wanted me to resolve the issue, then I couldn't do it for you mm -hmm. if I loved you. Yeah. Because if I loved you, I would be helping you. If I did it, at, I wouldn't love you. Because if I did it, I would be helping you to, do, to not to take responsibility, to avoid responsibility for your own personal life. Yeah. And that is not an act of love. Because love actually desires that our partner becomes a fully uh, self-sufficient self -responsible, self -self person who is capable and able to do things. That's what my love for you would motivate me, to have you feel confident and yeah. capable. In and every aspect of life. Yeah. Whether it's, a, whether it's thought to be a woman's job or a man's job, doesn't matter. In every aspect of life, you would, you would in the end, if, if I was a self-responsible, self-actualised, self-aware being, yes. I would wish to take responsibility and would be good at everything of yes. caring for myself. Yeah. And, oh, it's interesting. and you would love that. And I end. would love that and I would encourage that. You'd encourage because, that. Um, 
just a bit from our personal example, when we first met, I was very threatened about how capable you were and yeah. are. Yeah. And I actually, uh, my feeling wasn't love towards you. I wasn't encouraging of that. I actually no. desired that you, that I be able to fulfil a role so that I could feel that you need me, which yes. was really my desire to have a codependent relationship. Which was your desire to avoid the feeling that I didn't need you. Yeah, and that I wasn't worthy unless I had a role. Yeah. To, and, and that's true, I don't me. need you. Yes. The truth is I don't need you in the way that you're thinking. Yes. I am completely capable of doing everything for myself, everything for myself, and the only reason why I want to be with you is because I love you yeah. and I want to share my gift of my love with you. That's the reason why I want to be with you. And I would love to experience the desire of you sharing your gift of, lo of love to me and expressing our soul in a feminine way towards myself. I would love that too, but it's not a need. It's not an expectation or a demand. It's something that has to happen in the end for us to have a relationship, but it's not something that I feel I can demand. And this is the purity that's possible, isn't it? That we have relationships where love is the only gift that's given, really. Or it's the basis of all gifts given. Yes. And there's no demand or expectation on either end for anything, physical, emotional, spiritual, sexual. Yeah. It's all just love yeah. uh, motivating gifts. Exactly. That draws people that together. That draws people together. And because they are both uh, expressing their full potential of their, of their soul expressing their full desires, naturally, if they are soulmates, they will find their desires and passions also bring them into more harmony with each other and therefore even closer together. Yeah. That's what will automatically result. We'll talk about soulmates in another yeah. question, but, sure. but this is an automatic result, this constant growing in the relationship if we are living in the relationship in harmony with love. Mm. If we choose to not live the relationship in harmony with love, then stagnation is the first thing that occurs. And then after stagnation, degradation yeah. of the relationship. And God's laws are created in such a way to cause the degradation of such a relationship. And the reason, pardon me, why God has created those laws to cause the degradation of a relationship is because the relationship is out of harmony with love. And all of God's laws are operating to bring you back into harmony with love. So thank God, goodness. Thank goodness, <laughs> yeah. So God's laws are trying to expose the lack of love in the relationship. Yeah and make you consciously aware of them so that you have a desire or develop a desire at some point in your future to de deal with the mm -hmm. lack of love that exists within the relationship. So with regard to this question, what does my love for my partner do for my partner? Mm -hmm. I feel usually that is not the question people ask themselves when they're talking about relationships breaking up either. It's interesting, the very first two most important questions I believe that a single individual can ask themselves are the very two questions that most people avoid. Yeah. The most of the time people ask themselves not what does my love of self motivate me to do towards myself or what does my love of my partner motivate me to do for my partner. They are only focused on what should my partner do for me. Yes. <laughs> And that's it. Yeah. That's all they're focused on. And that is way out of harmony with having any kind of, uh, of strong relationship. If we ask these first two questions, you notice the very first two supplementary questions are completely based around what I have personal control over. Yes. What I can do. What actually. I can do to fix something. It's quite empowering, it's actually. very empowering. Yeah. I can only change myself. <laughs> I can't change my partner. So if, if my relationship is degrading, the only things I can really ask myself and have some kind of positive action and response that I have control over is what am I doing? What am I doing with my love of self? What am I doing with my love of my partner? They're the only two questions I can really ask myself, really, because I don't have control over what you're doing. Mm. I don't have control over my partner. I don't have control over your love of yourself or your love of me. I can make suggestions. I can support your love of yourself and your love of me. But I can't control it. I can't manipulate it. In fact, to do so would be out of harmony with love itself. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it is imperative that the very first two questions I ask myself in any problem are, what am I doing with regard to my love of myself? And secondly, what am I doing in regard to my love of my partner? They are the f first two questions and the only two questions, in fact, that we have personal control over. 
The, re the rest is all just what is my partner involved with. Mm -hmm. And we have no control over that. Mm -hmm. We can only see the results of that. So my suggestion to people is these first two questions, these first two supplementary questions, are the very next questions you need to ask after the primary questions. Yeah. And forget about, you can almost forget about the last two questions. Yeah. You can't forget completely about them, of course. But you can almost forget about them for a large portion of the progression of your relationship. Because your relationship can progress in major ways by you just asking yourself the first two questions. And dealing with the answers. Of course. Yeah. Uh, we have to deal with the answers. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about that as, a, as another question, um, how to deal with the answers. But we, we need to understand what kind of questions we need to ask ourselves. What I find most people do is they get so emotionally distraught in whatever the situation is happening yeah. that they don't ask themselves any questions, actually. They only, ask, they only focus totally on what's happening with their partner and how they feel about what their partner is doing. They don't have any reflection, self-reflection generally, about what's going on within themselves and what they're doing. And that's the primary problem. Yeah. If, you've got, if you've got two people doing that in a relationship, it's a terrible relationship. If you've got one person doing it in a relationship, it's bad enough. Mm -hmm. But if you've got two people having the inability to be self-reflective, you can basically, there's no, you can kiss the relationship goodbye as the saying goes yeah. here in Australia. You, you have no chance of resolving any issue under those circumstances because both of you are not focused on yourselves first. What's, what, what problems are within yourself that are causing these relationship issues? And the only way it can survive is really is if one partner takes on blame and... And this is what you see frequently yeah. happening where one party blames the other and the other party takes on the blame, whether imagined or real. Yeah. Um, and the, the relationship survives. Limps on. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, but it doesn't grow. Mm -hmm. It stagnates and eventually, of course, God's laws are correcting this, eventually it has to degrade. Yeah. Eventually it has to. Until you bring yourself into harmony with the God, God's laws of love, everything must degrade. Mm -hmm. God has designed your relationship to degrade every time mm -hmm. you act out of harmony with God's laws of love and truth. Every time you act out of harmony with these laws, your relationship has to degrade. And the reason why it has to is so that you become aware mm -hmm. of what's going on and why, so that you can change. That's the purpose. Why God created these laws in this manner. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we see so many relationships on the planet that are poor is because God's laws are trying to correct our concept of a relationship. And love. Our concept of love, of course, yeah. is involved with that. Yeah but uh, God's laws are constantly trying to correct it and most of us on earth are going into either rebellion or complete denial yeah. about what's actually happening in our relationships. Well, as you mentioned, I think, in our last session, a lot of people are just deciding not to have relationships yes. or redefining relationships like and it, saying monogamy is not even uh, valid or valuable exactly. because people are reaching this sense of hopelessness, aren't they? Exactly. They don't see mirrored around them anywhere a relationship that seems to be working. Yep. They don't have a good example of what is actually loving. Yep. And so it inevitably, yep. unless people um, are willing to take on some of these big questions, it's going to lead to demoralised people, isn't it? Yeah. Also, one thing we notice is that a good one, one half to two thirds of the people coming along to our seminars are single, mm. which is very, very interesting because that's an indication of how little they wish to address relationship issues. Yeah. They don't want to have a relationship, many of them, or if they do want one, they're not willing to look at their own part in why they don't have one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're always thinking that it's all someone else's problem. And, and uh, this is a big issue. And then on top of that, uh, oftentimes the other third <laughs> are in codependent relationships yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where each party is getting what they want from the other, but it's not a loving relationship yet. And so we see this relationship issue as a big issue, and it's particularly a big issue in your development of, of your relationship with God. Because if sooner or later, all relationship issues are going to be confronted, and what we notice is many people, many people in terms of their progression towards God are becoming stagnant in their relationship issues. Yeah. They do not want to address what's going on in their relationship, and as a result, 
they are not developing a relationship with God anymore. They are avoiding their relationship with God through avoiding their relationship issues. Because they're, they're not looking at these primary issues of am I betraying myself? Am I asking my partner to betray themselves? Yep. Correct. Am I taking personal responsibility? Am I encouraging their personal responsibility? And because they're not doing, because they're either betraying themselves or expecting betrayal or not taking personal responsibility or not, not encouraging personal responsibility, then that by definition means that they're avoiding stuff, big huge stuff, amount, huge amount big of injuries things. in yep. love inside of themselves. And so... And big issues of ethics. How can they grow? Yeah. How can... And how can you grow God towards God? The God's trying to... Per, per, equation. God's trying to perfect your love. Yeah. And, and you're trying to be hold on to what you currently have. Yep. How can you grow? Yep. You can't grow under those circumstances. Many people don't realise they're never going to have a, a, a relationship with God where it becomes at one with God unless they address these issues. And yet they have a deep refusal to address the issues. In fact, what we see happening in many occasions is we've spoken to people about their issues three, four, five, six years ago, and still they have not addressed the issues of their relationships. Yeah. And they wonder why they're stagnant in their relationship with God. Exactly. It's because they haven't learned how to love a person even yes. yet, let yeah. alone God. Yeah. <laughs> like they haven't, they haven't learned the lessons of love that God is attempting to teach them through the laws of attraction and other laws. And that's where I feel it's a beautiful provision, actually, that God's created a soulmate for us. Yes. That there's a division and we're going to grow back to each other because God has a purpose for everything she does. Yes. And partly she's trying to help us understand love. Exactly. Through this interaction. Mostly she's trying to help us understand yeah, love. Yeah, well, <laughs> predominantly, predominantly her whole purpose is <laughs> yeah. to help us understand the loving use of our will, isn't it? Or how we can well, use Well, no, I our feel will. the dominant thing is God wants us to experience her love. That was the yeah. main reason for our creation. And the secondary reason is learning how to experience her own will but and using our will yeah. in harmony with love. But yeah. But if you look at the very first point of our own creation, that is, God wants us to experience her love. How can we experience her love when we're in complete denial of problems with love? Yeah. You know, when we believe our version of love is the truth. And we're desperately unhappy, mind you. Oftentimes. Yeah. But we believe our version of love is the truth. And yet, if you look at, like, God's version of love, how are we ever going to accept God's version of love when we believe our version of love is right? We're not, yeah. is the answer. And, and if we don't, how can we ever become at one with God? Because yeah. at one moment with God is all about at one moment with God on the issue of love. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But this is where I feel that God's provision of making us halves of a soul, really, essentially, and creating in us this desire for the other half of us. Mm. Um, and, and even people I see in relationships, I see, you don't see what a gift this is. No. It's actually a gift to help you grow yes to help and if you approach it with ethics and a desire to love the way god loves or even just to the desire to love in a pure way yeah even with ethics e even with ethics yeah. even with a personal stance of ethics yeah. then growth is going to happen and it won't be you can't avoid it no, no. it's inevitable yeah. and um and in uh, instead of feeling it's a burden or a trouble or yeah. it's it's actually a gift yeah, yeah. And we just notice of a lot of people avoiding relationships because really in the end they're just avoiding truth from God. That's what they're doing. Yeah. And they want to do that. Yeah. So that, that's a different, separate, separate discussion perhaps though. Sure. Yeah. So let's move on to the next question. Next we? question, yeah. yeah.